Before we dive into all the technical details, imagine this scenario. It's early 2026, and the Linux landscape has shifted more dramatically than anyone predicted. People who once swore they'd never move away from Ubuntu are now talking about a new contender. Developers, newcomers, creative professionals, and even enterprise users are switching. The question on everyone's lips is simple. What happened? Which Linux distribution could possibly be the one that everyone switches to in 2026? To understand how we got here, let's rewind the clock and look at where things stood just a few years ago. Linux has never been a single monolithic operating system. Instead, it has been an ecosystem of distributions, each with its own philosophy, audience, and strengths. For decades, certain names like Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, Arch, and more recently Pop, Underscore OS and Monyaro have dominated discussions. Some were geared toward stability, others pushed bleeding-edge features, and a few were crafted with beginners in mind. But despite their strengths, no single distro ever became the undisputed king of Linux, until now. In 2024 and 2025, signs began to emerge that something was shifting. The world of computing was changing rapidly. Users were becoming increasingly frustrated with the restrictive nature of mainstream commercial operating systems. People were fed up with forced updates, privacy concerns, and closed ecosystems. At the same time, remote work, digital nomadism, and customization culture were all on the rise. Linux, always the open source underdog, started gaining serious ground. But it still lacked that one distro that could break into the mainstream. Something that promised power without complexity, customization without chaos, and stability without stagnation. Enter a new distribution that began quietly, almost under the radar. It didn't come from a major tech company. It didn't have millions of dollars in funding. It was built by a passionate group of developers who believed in one idea, that Linux needed a distro that could serve everyone from complete beginners to seasoned professionals. At first glance, this new contender looked familiar. It had a friendly installer, a sleek desktop environment, and a growing repository of applications. But as more users started exploring it, they realized it wasn't just another Ubuntu spin or a remix of existing distros. This was something different. What set this distro apart wasn't just its polished user experience. It was the philosophy behind it. The developers focused on creating a unified ecosystem, something that bridged the gap between ease of use and deep technical power. They knew that the biggest barrier to Linux adoption was not performance or security. It was the perception of complexity. Many potential users liked the idea of Linux, but they feared that it was for experts only. This new distribution decided to challenge that notion. Right from the start, it offered intuitive system tools, elegant settings, panels, and seamless hardware detection. For people switching from Windows or Mac OS, there were familiar features that lowered the learning curve. At the same time, under the hood, it packed powerful tools that advanced users genuinely appreciated. Developers could install programming environments with a single command. Gamers could access cutting-edge drivers and compatibility layers and creators could use professional-grade software without jumping through hoops. But beyond usability, the distro's rise was fueled by something even bigger. Community. A global community of contributors, testers, teachers, and advocates formed around it. Online forums buzzed with activity. Documentation was not only thorough, it was alive, dynamically updated, and written in clear human language. Tutorials poured in, helping newcomers learn not just how to use the OS, but how to understand it. When users ran into trouble, they didn't just get support, they got mentorship. This sense of inclusion mattered. It transformed the operating system from a tool into a movement. People didn't just switch, they brought friends. They created videos, guides, and even in-person meets. Universities started offering courses built on this dish. Drotech, influencers and educators began recommending it not just as a hobbyist choice, but as a serious platform for learning, development, and daily use. Performance was another big factor. Modern software development had been leaning toward efficiency, and this distro embraced that with cutting-edge optimizations. It introduced smart resource management that learned how users worked and optimized system performance accordingly. That meant smoother multitasking, faster boot times, longer battery life on laptops, and more responsive applications. For users frustrated with sluggish systems, this was a breath of fresh air. Security, always a Linux strong suit, was taken even further. The distro integrated proactive sandboxing tools, automatic vulnerability scanning, and transparent permissions management. For enterprise and security conscious users, this wasn't just reassuring, it was revolutionary. They could deploy systems with confidence, knowing they didn't have to sacrifice usability for safety. An interesting turning point came in the world of gaming. For years, Linux gaming had been limited by lack of native support and fragmented compatibility layers. But by late 2025, this distro had become the first to ship with a fully integrated gaming stack that supported the vast majority of popular titles out of the box. That broke a huge psychological barrier. Gamers started giving Linux a real look, and many stayed. The distribution didn't just rely on community enthusiasm. It formed strategic partnerships with major open-source projects, hardware vendors, and even some independent software studios. 
These collaborations resulted in native drivers, optimized kernels, and software packages that ran better and were more stable than what users had previously experienced on Linux. Critics, of course, were skeptical at first. Some argued that the distro was just a polished wrapper around existing technologies. Others worried that its rapid growth might lead to fragmentation or bloat, but the developers were careful. They prioritized modularity, giving users the freedom to install only what they needed. They also established clear governance and contribution guidelines to ensure sustainable growth. By early 2026, usage statistics started showing something remarkable. Installations of this distro were growing faster than any other Linux distribution had in history. Downloads skyrocketed, community engagement surged, and even enterprise adoption began to climb. Articles and social media posts with titles like Why I Switched to This Linux Distro in 2026 began trending. But beyond the hype, real users started sharing authentic experiences. A graphic designer talked about how the distro made professional tools feel native. A software engineer described how development environments were simpler to set up than ever. A university student said that Linux, once intimidating, now felt empowering. A retiree praised the ease of use and the responsiveness of the system on old hardware. These voices mattered more than any marketing campaign. Now, let's dive deeper into the nitty-gritty of what makes this distro stand out technically. Its desktop environment is both beautiful and efficient. It strikes a balance between minimalism and productivity, with smart layouts that adapt to your workflow. Windows feel fluid and intentional. Settings are grouped logically, meaning users don't have to dig through endless menus to find what they need. It's like the system anticipates your intentions. Underneath the package management system redefines simplicity without sacrificing control. Traditional Linux package managers were powerful, but often confusing to newcomers. This distro introduced a universal package framework that combined the best features of existing systems. It supported both traditional APT-style packages and newer containerized formats, making software installation both flexible and secure. Developers could package applications in a way that guaranteed compatibility across versions, eliminating the dreaded dependency hell. Updates were another area where this distro shined. Instead of imposing disruptive update cycles, it offered a smart update system that prioritized stability. The system learned how you used your machine and scheduled updates at times that minimized interruptions. Critical security patches were applied automatically, while optional feature updates waited for user approval. Users suddenly felt in control without the anxiety of breaking their system after an update. Another innovation was the integrated learning mode. When users first booted the system, they were greeted with a friendly guide, but not just a one-time welcome screen. This guide was interactive and adaptive. It taught key concepts contextually. If you opened a terminal, tips appeared that explained commands you might find useful, open an app store. Helpful hints described how to search for popular categories. This wasn't condescending, it was empowering. Accessibility was baked into every layer. Screen readers, voice commands, high contrast themes, and customizable font settings were available from the first install. Colors, layouts, and interface behaviors could be tuned for any visual or motor preference. The result was an operating system that didn't just claim to be inclusive, it was inclusive. Developers weren't ignored. The distro shipped with state-of-the-art support for containers, virtual machines, and development tools. It included native support for popular programming languages, debuggers, and build systems. Its terminals were powerful but approachable, with intuitive defaults that reduced friction for new learners without limiting expert users. For open-source contributors, this distro felt like home, but also like the future. On the hardware front, the distribution made surprising strides. Instead of waiting for community drivers to catch up, the project invested in collaboration with hardware manufacturers. Many vendors began shipping devices certified to run this Linux distro out of the box. Laptops, desktops, and even some tablets arrived with full support, touchscreen, Wi-Fi, graphics, acceleration, all working smoothly. The ecosystem around this distro began to flourish. Independent software vendors started releasing native builds, and compatibility layers ensured that a huge library of existing software ran reliably. Content creation tools, productivity suites, development IDEs, and even multimedia applications felt native and fast. Suddenly, Linux wasn't just for servers and geeks, it was a platform capable of handling anything mainstream users threw at it. Enterprise adoption followed a predictable trajectory. Once the OS proved stable, secure, and flexible, organizations began piloting it for internal use. Tech teams appreciated its transparency and control. IT admins loved its manageability and update policies. Security teams praised the proactive defenses. Gradually, it found its way into workstations, cloud environments, and development pipelines. And yet, despite all the technical brilliance, what truly made this distro the one everyone switches to was its community ethos. Every feature, every design choice, every collaboration was shaped by listening to users. Feedback didn't disappear into a void, it fueled the roadmap. People felt ownership. They weren't just using an operating system, they were part of its evolution. Now, you might wonder if this distro has any downsides. 
No system is perfect. Some advanced users still prefer the sheer control of minimalistic distros like Arch. Others feel nostalgic for Debian's conservative approach. And yes, some proprietary applications still lag in native availability, though compatibility layers have bridged much of that gap. But these aren't flaws, they're preferences. When you look at adoption across diverse user groups, this distro simply checks more boxes than any other. So as we stand in 2026, looking at the Linux horizon, one thing is clear. The operating system world has changed. The distro that everyone talks about, the one that people are switching to, the one that feels approachable yet powerful, it's no longer a prediction, it's reality, and it didn't happen overnight. It happened because passionate developers dared to rethink what a Linux distribution could be. It happened because a community rallied around shared values of openness, inclusion, and excellence. And it happened because users, ordinary and advanced alike, recognized that they finally had an OS that didn't force them to choose between simplicity and power. If you're watching this and thinking about making the switch, there's never been a better moment. Whether you're a complete newcomer, tired of restrictive ecosystems, a creative professional seeking flexibility, a developer craving power, or just someone curious about what Linux can be, this distribution invites you to explore, learn, and contribute. In the end, the question isn't just which Linux distro will everyone switch to in 2026, the real question is, what do you want from your operating system? Because in this new era, Linux isn't just for a niche few, it's ready for everyone.